stop offering her alcohol, Russell. Okay. Welcome to the downside. <laughs> My name is Jamarco Sarezi. Jamarco likes to try to cancel me at the start okay, of every, good, good, every, good, every good. episode. Uh, uh, we're here in the new podcast studio. Wow. Uh, uh, which means I'm now paying half the rent for this yeah. room. Let's go. <laughs> I'm in no place to be doing that. Uh, 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 Russell, what do you think? I'm loving it. I love that. I like the couch a lot, actually. Sure. I like, uh, I feel like I have a lot more room to just like kind of, you know, fall kick asleep. back, fall asleep. It's very comfortable. Sometimes you don't want it to be too comfortable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you might come here if- I'm if, leaning back, you know, like about, yeah. So yeah, I, uh, this is um, like a work couch though. Yeah. You know, it keeps you- keeps you focused yes energized. it's nice I, I do, there's a kitchen you know there's a, bathroom, a kitchen a, well it's gonna be a, a guest, guest room. room we can take a nap if we needed to oh, yeah, yeah. i don't you know. know how many guests we're gonna have my yeah. first thought i said oh tova now we can we can start a comedy club and this is the condo that they stay at oh god and i'll headline oh. it every weekend oh we'll like wow. we'll cook the books wow you have big plans okay okay <laughs> um we're here with our special guest yes actor Elsie Fisher, how are you doing, Elsie? Woo! I'm doing all right, man. You know, in this you you're the youngest guest we've had on the show. Yeah, I was going to ask you. I'm 19, like, right? Yes, yes. Jesus yeah. Fuck. By, I don't by. like having people uh, uh, younger <laughs> and more successful than me on the pod. <laughs> Whoa, this right, is right, a let's rare down here, let's down. Uh, First of all, I'm like spiritually 40 for sure. So mm-hmm, hopefully, mm-hmm. you know. Well, I'm literally almost 40. So, <laughs> but the, but <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Still young too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, I, we, we connected. I think what happened, you, you, you posted something on Twitter. Uh, it was, uh, it was very funny. It was like, it was, it was couples counseling, but it was like oh, therapist yes. for seven years yeah. old. Oh, that's funny. And you tweeted, uh, this is just my parents' divorce. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, and then I shared it and I don't think I put, I'm terrible with names. So I had seen eighth grade. I didn't. I didn't know together. your yeah. name and sure. I put it together. And then my girlfriend often like someone writes me on Twitter or, you know, they respond and they like something. And she goes like, do you know who the fuck that is? <laughs> and then yep. she goes, you need to have them out as a guest. Wow. 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 Uh, so it all worked out. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. You have divorced parents. Yeah, I do. Um, How old are you when they got divorced? Well, I think they've, they've probably been like separated my whole life. And then really? they, they got an official divorce at 13. So when I was 13, not them. Sure. Sure. <laughs> it was an marriage, early yeah. marriage yeah. child. Real yeah. fucked up stuff. Um, they were, do you have older siblings? No, I'm the eldest, but I have a younger sibling, younger brother. But so you said when you were, you were born, they were already separated? Well, like, well, like since I was like four. So like very, okay. very early on in life, they Me were too. like, mm. you don't remember them being together. Uh, not happily. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I get that. <laughs> uh, and why did it take so long for them to get divorced? We're going right into it. No, yeah, I mean, this are, is great. Yeah. This is this is my, like, therapy right now. Yeah. You guys are the children therapists. <laughs> Good. We are going to um, charge you at the end of this. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what was the question? <laughs> Wait, why what why did it take them so long to get divorced? From four to 13. Um, I don't know. Like, paperwork's really dumb. And it also costs money to get divorced for yeah. whatever reason. Yeah. The law's like, no, you do love each other unless we yeah. have a couple hundred dollars. They really, they don't want you... Uh, w- with mine in Maryland, this is my more my mom and stepdad when they got divorced mm. in Maryland. At, they might have uh, changed the law, but you had to live under separate roofs for a year. Oh, and wow. I don't know if you remember this, you are not allowed to have sex during that year with anyone or each other. <laughs> with each other, <laughs> oh, you with each other. They put chastity belts yeah. on you. They're like, "Good luck, kid." Yeah. But I do think. I, again, I think it's to discourage divorce. So number one, if someone doesn't want the divorce, they could say, "Hey, we, you're on we, it. We fucked." Yeah. <laughs> and what, how are you going to prove that? And I also think that it's, could it's, trap people. It could trap people. Also, let's say you do fuck someone else because you know you, you can't hold it in for a year. Yeah. And then uh, whoever didn't want the divorce can say, "Well, uh, infidelity. I get all the stuff. Oh a lot God. of things. Whoa. It's all it's all mendacious. They want you to also, get married. That's Maryland. It's not like." No offense to other some <laughs> states, but you know, like you would think, like the, they would be a little more progressive. You would think, yeah. you know, like that's. Well, a, I was right on the tip of the Civil War. It was like it could have gone either I way. Guess also, it's an older state. Sometimes, right? Sure. Those East Coast ones, like they, yeah, yeah. they might have your weird... history's right. They didn't yeah, start yeah. with California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, oh, we got to go into the music. I said, oh, what's yes. something shitty? What's something bothering you? What do you not like? It's something to have you like... today, even. Oh, um, no, I don't know today, but you know what's been bothering me is little kids who think they know. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
I do very much, Elsie, speaking <laughs> to you right now. Oh, thanks, uh, man. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> my little kid. Yeah, <laughs> this is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. All right, Elsie, we'll get to you in a second. I, uh... Uh-oh. So, what did I want to co- I wanted to complain about today? We we just cleaned out this apartment. We found two dead mice. It, in the apartment? In the apartment. Where were they? One right here. Oh, one right over there. What did they die of? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more just I don't know. Did I don't you have know. Traps or they just died? No, they just we have the humane we have the humane traps. Oh. They're probably mice that I caught with a humane trap. Let them out right there on the highway. I didn't go very far when I let these mice out. Okay, yeah. you know, yeah. And then they came back and they died. Uh, one of them was so dead, I thought it was a dust pile oh. other than the tail. <laughs> like it had truly decomposed. Oh my god! To D- a deep you didn't level. smell it at all. I think we just didn't. We didn't come here very often. Did you? When you came in, it doesn't oh, do smell you, bad. It doesn't smell. Do you think like, they starved to death? <gasps> I don't think it was fun. I don't think like their loved ones came by and they said bye. Oh my god! I think it was a, a sad, yeah, sad death. Yeah, they weren't even yeah. together either. That would uh, be really sad if you found two mice together, like the holding oh. hands, each other dead. Oh god! Oh, oh my god! <laughs> That's like. Did you ever read the book? Um, uh, Hunchback of, of Notre Dame. The, so the, the movie. No, but the real ending of it mm-hmm. is like they're like, and then hundreds of years in the future, they find that basically the, the author describes finding the corpses of the hunchback holding like like the curved spine hunchback, like the skeleton holding what's her name? Esmeralda. Esmeralda. Like, oh, wow. it, like basically she dies and then I think he just goes to the tomb and like cradles her dead body and then just dies there. Well, thanks for spoiling it. <laughs> yeah, Jeez, I was, was going to get to that. We were about to get to the ending. <laughs> Speaking of endings, I I was doing my research. I did all the research, mm-hmm. and I I just uh, listen. I don't watch any s- horror movies, <laughs> so I just skipped right to the ending. And I oh my I, god, I, I you YouTube me. searched yeah. just the ending of Texas Chainsaw. Oh Master, yeah, <laughs> and I was like, I could have thrown up on my phone. It was so so upsetting. <laughs> it was. Uh, I can't do it. You watched the whole movie. I did watch the whole but movie. But you don't like horror movies. Well, no. It's something I used to love horror movies as a kid. Mm. Um, but now, as I get older, I I have a harder time with them. Like, I, I still like them, but something about them is more upsetting to me now than they used to be. I think I could right. just watch it before and be, like, totally tuned out from feeling anything. Like, you like them. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I do. I have like a different relationship with them now because I was never a fan and then I ended up doing a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I feel like homework a little bit. Like I watch one and I have to be like, oh, she's like screaming this way, blah, blah, blah. But um, is it, I feel, I've never, I've never had to act, uh, uh, period. It's been a while. But <laughs> uh, uh, it feels like it would be exhausting to the scene is, just the shot of seeing your friend decapitated. Oh, that just yeah. it just feels like like a deep, deep act, intense acting, and just again and again. I feel like the shoot mm. would be tiring. That I mean that that whole shoot was pretty tiring. It was cool. We shot in Bulgaria actually. Wow. So we shot the we shot the film in like the midst of twenty twenty. Like like. Uh, the height of the pandemic in 2020 and they're like want to go to bulgaria for like four months and sure sh- they're like they haven't started quarantining there let's go to bulgaria Truly, F- weird fact about bulgaria also th- so there were there were maybe i'm going on such a tangent but Please. this this is the show for that i yeah. figure but um it was like bulgaria and romania and one other country were the only three that were open open for shooting at the time and the reason bulgaria was one of them was their covid numbers were low because like 2015 Another strain of of like COVID went around and everyone got it. And like, COVID fifteen. <laughs> yeah, COVID fifteen. Everyone this got COVID fifteen and had immunity. Or I've like, never heard this. I know not at all. This I, feels this like it could have solved the whole problem for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't think anyone knows Bulgaria exists. They were like keeping their secrets under lock and key. Sure. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't share it with yeah, America. Yeah. But then you came there and you guys helped get those numbers up. Yeah, we, yeah, we yeah, really yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, because I left and and I. You're worried was, about Leatherface. Worry about actors from America filling a horror oh, movie. We were terrible, like going around all all, all <laughs> over, masks off. Kidding, kidding. Um, what, what 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 when in 2020? What month are we talking here? Like, I want to say they sh- they shipped me out in like ju- uh, June. 
And then that's crazy because no one else is working. I mean, so few people yeah. are working. No one was working. No one was. Yeah, we it were was... at a cabin in New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah. not working. Wow. Yeah, we 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 did. That Sounds was our... like its own little horror film. But yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when you went to Bulgaria, did you have to quarantine for 14 days? Not for, no, we had to quarantine for like three days, but they, they put me in this hotel room that had no windows. Uh, oh my God. Or it, it had a window, but it, it didn't open. So yeah. in this room for three days, like door dashing different foods. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like with horror movies acting wise, mm. I can fake, if I'm not in the right place, I could, you know, I could be angry. I could express it. Act, whatever acting terminology you want to use. Yeah. Yeah. But if I was like, I could see me like trying to be scared yeah. and like looking at the performance and going like, oh my God, yeah. what was I doing? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're just looking at nothing and you have to be like your head, your friend. Yeah. You have to go, ah! <laughs> yeah. Or screaming or crying. Yeah. It'd be tough. I would just get nervous mm -hmm. about, do, do you? Well, I, I think for me at least, it's like using that anxiety because or like, cause the nerves are the fear. So like, like, it's almost like, you know, it, it's kind of embarrassing to act scared and, like, yeah. be vulnerable. But that's that's the scary part that you tune into. Because yeah. you're mm -hmm. like, okay, this is going to be embarrassing. So why not just, like, vocalize, you know, yeah. Elsie's Elsie's like, as a better actor than you. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Come on. No, 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 no. I'm not saying, I'm, I'm just, it's just a funny, <laughs> funny thing to be like, it's hard to act, isn't it? To just, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not telling you get it you're off Broadway wrong. boy. <laughs> Russell, Russell's in one off-Broadway play, <laughs> and now he's a big shot. He's in Titanic. <clears throat> Ooh. Uh, Musical. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, so, well, okay, you started so young. I did. Yeah. I'm still pretty young. I'm yes. Still yes. Yeah, no, when we know. did you start? Start. Um, I, like when I was like five. Did you look it up at all? Uh, it's okay. Five. It's okay. Despicable this is Me. The best. Uh, <laughs> Just, I could do the whole. I could do the whole IMDb. Wow. Despicable Me one and two, but then not for three. No. Wow. Because the voice change. I voice wow. dropped a couple octaves, and they were like, "No, no, no." Were your parents in the business? No, they were both waiters, which is how they met, and they both worked in the restaurant industry. And they heard other actors complaining and they're like, how did, oh, yeah. how did you get into it then? So, okay. So there's, um, where I grew up is, uh, this, you know, Palm Springs, um, yeah, there's like yeah. the mountains above Palm Springs. There's a little tourist town called Idlewild. Um, it's like sort of like a hidden gem, but that's where I grew up and lived there until I was, I was uh, 11 or 12, I want to say. Uh -huh. But, um, yeah, but so both my parents were, were, um, waiters and, and my dad, they worked at different restaurants, um, in the same small town. But um, anyways, my dad worked at this place that was like a jazz place, and there was this bassist, Marshall, who used to like get on the stage and like like do crazy stuff with a bass, like upright, cool bass. And I think when I was really young, I used to like get up on stage and like, like w like completely improv. We just had this thing, and it wasn't a big stage, right? It was just like the ambiance for the thing. So it was yeah. very low stakes for a child to be sure, <laughs> sure. getting up on the stage. Yeah. Um, but long story short, like I think there are all a lot of industry people who like pass through and like and it was you got scouted from this. Yeah, I got like oh scouted. Oh my god! I, I was a pretty stories. cute child. One too. of those stories you hear, you don't hear them as much anymore. That's no. amazing. Yeah, yeah these days that's because people amazing. don't scout in person anymore. It's like oh, I saw this kid on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But back then they had to do it in person. I think that's amazing. When I was a kid. I used to dance like in the living room with like my, my parents, separate living rooms. <laughs> and uh, we'd put on like, it's raining men. Yeah. Oh and uh, uh, this is where I think a lot of things came from was me, you know, dancing to it's raining men. <laughs> and uh, I, I told them, I said, I had this urge. I was like, we need, I, so I said, we need to get our living room. We need to recreate our living room on a stage so people can bear witness to this. Whatever that urge is in me, for better or for worse, yeah. you can see it as a character flaw if you want, but you're an actor too, so shut the fuck no, up. No, I used to do little plays too. I just love the... But like there was the, an urge of like, room. people need to witness this, this thing. Yeah. It wasn't enough for me to just feel the joy. Mm -hmm. It also had to be witnessed to be fully activated. That's, that's, yeah. that's the weird mm. curse that some people have. Mm -hmm. And so to hear if, if, if my parents had actually taken me seriously... I could have been a despicable me. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to hear. You could have been, been young, vulnerable Kayla in 2018's eighth grade. Yeah. So, but your parents, was your dad, was he young at this time when you got despicable me? He's still a server at the restaurant. Yeah, he was, I, he was, he was, um, 
like 30, I want to say. Uh-huh. Something like that. Yeah, super young. That's super a young. young. You're you're young, Vera, 30. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you get Despicable Me. Are you suddenly, I mean, you're so young at this point, you might remember, but at what point did your income surpass your parents' income? Oh, like immediately. Immediately. Which, yeah. Wait, well, yeah, because like, I don't know why, because I feel like voiceover animation is a completely underpaid industry like voice actors are constantly struggling for pay but you know i i did the first film and the maybe maybe i to bring me back for the second i I don't remember i was five but like but like you know by the time i was like nine i was like well college is like paid for in the future and it, it, all, all of this was in a Coogan account, too. Like, What's I didn't, a Coogan account? Coogan account is an account you have if you're a child actor. And basically, I, I don't remember the act, story, but where it came from was uh, there was this guy with the last name Coogan. He was a child actor, and his parents took all of his money. Yeah. And by the time he reached adulthood, he couldn't support himself, and he had no like other... And he should have had a ton of money. Like, yeah, and he yeah. should have had a ton of money. Yeah. So they implemented this law where if you're a child actor, like 80% of your money goes into this account that opens up once you're 18. So that's really, so that all just opened up for you like last year. Yeah. Some of it. Yeah. I know. And then I moved to New York. (laughs) Make it big in the big city. (laughs) I'm like, I'm watching it go down just as fast as it came to me. Yeah. That sounds like a movie. Like, um, the Coogan account. No, like people waiting for someone, a child actor who made all this money to turn 18 to then kidnap them and, and take their money. Sure. Whoa, sure. Sh- 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 come on, come on. We gotta <laughs> don't give away ideas for free, man. <laughs> you're or maybe a Texas <clears throat> chainsaw, and it's like they're about to turn eighteen. They have one day. They need to stay alive. Yeah, just to get that yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, that's really interesting. I, I, because I, it's got to be related to like child labor, which is generally illegal. But I guess with acting, they were like, yeah. well, we need to make an exception because we want these TV shows. You know what's dumb though is I got tax on all my income as a child, which like good taxes are good. I didn't get to vote. Yeah. I was being taxed without representation. Yeah. Are you taxed though now that you take it out or were you taxed already? At the time. At That's the time. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to get some child actor. Let them run for president too. Yeah. Fuck it. Let's get yeah. a child in the White House. Right? Yeah. Um. So Coogan account. I mean, it's, do you, so your parents got to have 20% of your income. Um. 20% of my income or whatever percentage was, available for use they never touched it Ooh. so it, it was they get some i mean they're doing some work no they were really like they well, like you're, you're you're eating at the ritz and they're eating <laughs> home with crackers and no no, no we were all eating craft mac and cheese together uh-huh. um no i mean like like i think it was like i helped them get a car when like my dad's car broke down but that he was also driving me yeah, th- th- like hours to go to LA. Yeah, like seven, like five days a week to go to these auditions. But but they never, never like wanted it. Sure. Yeah. So it, it was just like also <laughs> chilling out. I think it's got to be as someone who I was financially dependent on my father for mm. too long, <laughs> and it skewed our relationship. I just can't even imagine the dynamic of having your child suddenly uh, uh, making this insane mm-hmm. income. And how to balance it and the power dynamics of it and yeah. the, 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 oh. Let's be clear though. They still held all the power. Like I still had to ask to, to get the new Pokemon games on my DS. Sure. <laughs> so, you know. And they're like, fine, sweetheart. Here's your credit card back. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. So who was more into it? Your mom or your dad? Um, m- n- My dad was the more involved one. But uh-huh. neither of them were like stage parents, you know, but like, cause they, they had no ambitions, um, in any relation to the industry. It was more just like taking me place to place. And like, are you enjoying it? They had no, like, they had no like thing they wanted to do like career wise. Well, they, they had other things like my, like my mom went on, she's like a sommelier now. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. very, very fun. I took her to Bulgaria, like had fun being in Europe with the sommelier. Uh, and my dad makes lamps, which is cool. That's, That's cool. fun. Right? He yeah. like he just like builds these lamps. So they're both very artistic. Isn't that what John John Mulaney's people. wife does? I think so. She she right. builds well, like X Oh. Jeez, John Marco. Oh, sorry to bring it up. Tova has a picture uh uh that she made. What's her name? The uh, ex wife? The ex wife. Anna. 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 Yeah. yeah. Anna. That's it. 
uh, we're all the Anna yeah. formerly known so as Miss Blaine. Delicately. So, but there's she has a picture I think in there, and it's like one Anna took after the divorce, where it's like mm-hmm. her at like it and like oh, an at empty dining table, at a dining table. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. the other plate's empty, and it's like, and I always I have this you know my ego where I'm like. One day we'll have Melanie on the podcast and I'll forget about that photo and we'll be like hanging right <laughs> here and he'll walk out immediately the second he sees it. Um, so, all right, so your parents not getting along. Yeah, I, You know, they're civil. They're civil. They're civil, that's good. I think good. they're just very different people. But they had yeah. another kid. You said you have a sibling. Yeah, so they pretty much like had my brother and were like, nah. <laughs> sure, yeah. they're like one last try. How, yeah. how much difference in age? You like and four your... years. Okay, well. Yeah. What does your brother do? Um, he's I'm just chilling. He's, cool. he's fucking yeah. fifteen. Yeah, he's fifteen. Yeah. He's, he's a dark Who knows? Maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> no, maybe no. with these jeans, they fucking no. If if anyone was like a stockbroker at fifteen, though, yeah. it would absolutely be my younger brother. Yeah. He's just he, His name is Nathan. He, I shouldn't be doxing him. Sorry. Whatever. He, yeah. he he's been in stuff before. He's made cameos. He's out there. Really. Yeah, I, I did the show Castle Rock, and mm-hmm. there was an episode yeah. of that that took place in the past, and he auditioned for a role on that show, like, like and got it, separate, like, performance, I'm, I don't know, maybe there was nepotism involved, I was not aware, sure. but, um, but he was on the show, and he, like, was great, just for this little yeah. role. Well, speaking of, I always think about, I think, uh, people talk about nepotism a lot these mm. days. They do. And... Someone, someone tweeted the other day. They it was uh, they were in a writer's room, and Jerry Seinfeld's daughter was was in the the writer's yes. room. Yeah. And you know, I guess the the assumption being, oh, she's twenty one, she shouldn't be in this writer's room. She mm-hmm. didn't earn it. But there's a, it makes sense. Nepotism makes sense if you oh, succeed. I see it, yeah. or if it's your show. I think people, what people like sometimes seem to really misunderstand. Like, okay, if you're Amy Schumer and you have a writer's room, you get to pick whoever the fuck you want for that room. The room exists because of you. Mm-hmm. It's not your job to then not put in anyone that you might want yeah. or to give a favor to. Yeah. But I also get it from the perspective of people. I, I, I know there's some people, especially when it comes with like famous family, mm. there's a there's a, a whiff of, I think it's eugenics, where they think, oh, this father's talented, the kid is talented too. Mm. And there's this belief that, so, but I don't know. I just think the idea that nepotism is going to, go away is insane. Oh, never. And no, I think never. It's never going to go If away. your brother gets put in a thing that you're in, f- f- why not? Well, yeah, yeah no, I, and I, you know. Actors have gotten shit for way worse reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true, very true. Yes. The only time it ever really bothers me is when there's an interview where then the person like basically has to like pretend that that doesn't happen. That's the only yeah. thing that bothers me when they're like, and my parents were like, you know what? I know we are the most, we're billionaires who built an empire yeah, on yeah. this <laughs> thing, but they said, you're doing it yourself. And I did it myself. Like, you know, like that's yeah, the only yeah. time where it's like the pretending that there's no, I think yeah. so Washington's son like said something. He was like, oh. he was like, he was like, I don't, he didn't go by Washington or something. He's like, he basically was like, I don't yeah. advertise that yeah. I'm Denzel's son. And I'm like, everyone, hey, yeah, everyone they all in know. town already <laughs> knows who you and are. Before you walk in a room, this is what happens. Hey, this next guy's Denzel's yeah. son. <laughs> I mean, absolutely, of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's nothing wrong with that. Well, no, at no. least he's like very talented too. I think yeah. the only thing about nepotism that irks me is if it's just like some guy. You know, yeah, he's sure. like he is just there because well, it, like I, the, my favorite is when you watch something and you're and it's bad enough that you're like, who the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah. And then you Google it and you're like, oh, That's- so that is actually the worst form of it when you're like. You, you something is so noticeably bi- noticeably bad that yeah. you Google it and you're like, oh, they're so and so's, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but that doesn't happen that that often. I feel like not that often. I think usually thankfully. I'm like, uh, man, they're pretty good, you know. Yeah, right. So. <laughs> they're fine. Credit where yeah. credits do. Yeah. Um, so you you started this super young age. Did your parents did it feel like they were like? I feel like we, you know, the general belief where if someone's young and they succeed is a lot of them get fucked up. I know that we just focus mm. on the fucked up ones, though, you know. Yeah. The ones that are doing fine, we don't focus on. The ones that go into a different business, we don't focus on. We focus on the Aaron Carters of the world. <clears throat> Did your, were you doing homeschooling early? Like, what? No, I was, I was public school um, until my freshman year of high school. And then I, that, that was when eighth grade came out and I started working a lot more. Um, and then after then, I was like, 
this there's no way to balance like the working and going to school yeah. um so i like did online school for a year and that was terrible uh and then i graduated early um because yeah <laughs> yeah because of the the online school you're just able to get the credits done sooner uh well no california has like a test that's specifically for california <laughs> yeah it's just like an easy pass uh whatever but <laughs> I don't know. You like I did a test and they're like only thirty percent of people pass. And then it was questions about long division. So yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. When you made that shift, I it's it's just so young to make that that decision. Do you ever look back and go like fuck I didn't get a high school experience? Uh yeah, I, I think I have. Like in the moment it felt so correct. And I think ultimately I'm grateful that I did it. But um I did I've probably did put myself in a little bit of like uh, an arrested development for a while in terms of interacting with other people my age. Cause there's also this assumption, Oh, I'll work with other people my age. And then that yeah. could never come. Um, so like I I'm probably now just now, especially moving to the city, having sort of that high school experience and like, and like the, the like college experience vicariously through other people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Socially when you went from public school like and then eighth grade comes out and you make that what was that transition like for socially like do you, you had, i'm assuming you had friends in public school mm. like were you <laughs> able to maintain those connections or was that a difficult kind of yeah no thing? and my life was so normal after eighth grade came out too um or like i would be going to award shows and like that was such a beautiful wonderful experience and, and then people were like come to the after party i'm like i can't i have to go to math class tomorrow uh -huh. at 8 a.m yeah um and people didn't give a shit they were like i think the trailer was maybe like it was it was like trending on youtube when it dropped or something um and and the kids at like in my p class were like giving me shit for it you're like oh the dumb trailer <laughs> <laughs> oh you're in a I stupid dumb one. movie <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh, that oh, is so oh, and the, funny. This is a great story too. Bo used to love telling this one, but I actually, I, I was in the theater program my freshman year of high school and I had auditioned for the school play and I didn't get a part. And they still put you in the, the wow. yearbook? I, I'm actually not in the yearbook in my freshman year either because I, I was like absent for yearbook day photo. So I think my name's in there, but there's no photo of me in, in my freshman year. That's very funny where they fucked that up and they go, well, we gotta, we gotta include her in the theater department. Yeah. This is, there's so many, there, there's time where like colleges, uh, I, cause I went to college for musical theater and whoever succeeds, you know, they feature them really heavily in yeah. all the flyers yeah. and yeah. whatever. I think I wrote my college. This is, this is how bad my college was where I was one of the people and I, I was like, please don't use me. Don't ever use me. Fuck this school. If you use me, I'll you speak out against You wrote to them and it. said that? Probably to like an email server, like way when I was younger and mad. And yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And no one, it was one of Were those Were they no threatening to use you? <laughs> no, I think, I think it was just like the name was in a place and it just felt like, it felt like, fuck you, don't, yeah, I don't use I my, my college, don't use my name. Want Especially my to colleges. solicit more kids. It feels like a ski, a Ponzi. Oh, oh yeah. Scam. Yeah. <laughs> don't bring, yeah, yeah. Were you, did you take any acting classes along the way or were you really just like learning as you go? Were you reading the Stanislavski book? <laughs> I've only recently been reading Stanislavski. I actually, I, I was going to bring my Meisner to read on the train. Oh, really? I totally the, forgot it. Which one? The, the, the red one with his face on the front? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Do you think you read and you like read it? You're like, oh, fuck, I should have done that for the last 10 movies. Mm. Like a little bit. I was, I was reading, um, Michael Chekhov on the technique of acting, though, which is a book I randomly stumbled upon. He's the gestures guy, right? He's the gestures. the gestures. But, like, so much of that, like, I felt like, oh, that's stuff I've actually been really striving to find the words to, like, talk about and tune in on. Mm -hmm. And this guy, like, already knows all of it. So I'm actually not inventing anything ever. Everything's already been done. Yeah. Do your research. It's, uh, I, I, I don't know if I brought it up where I was. Uh, my girlfriend and I, we went to this. Governor's Island, uh, glamping. Ooh. We did shrooms. And there was a guy, he helped us uh, move the hammock. And he worked there. And, and I was talking to him, and I was very high. But but uh, uh, he was like, oh, yeah, I'm an actor. And I was like, oh, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I study with so-and-so. Uh, and they studied under Uta Hagen. And I just thought, like, the dynasties of these acting teachers, yeah. per, per, you know, because in my mind, and I was nice to him, but I was like, who gives a shit? Mm. They say with Uga Hagen, a thousand people. Who was Uda Hagen? Just an actor who, you know, had to teach. Yeah. And it was just interesting how those names, these philosophies just 
created schools that are watered down versions. Yes. But they, yeah. it's like this weird legacy system where, and why was Uda Hanga famous? Because she studied with Stanislavski in Moscow. And yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, mm. I think sometimes I, st- I, I used to be so into technique and then you get into the real world and you're like, you abandon so much of it and you just have to f- make your own along the way. Yeah. Well, I, I think so. And that, that's, that has been my approach for forever is like y- y- making this own thing. But I don't know. I, I feel like the more I've been working, thankfully, um, I, just want to have it under my belt. I just want to like know it and then I can choose. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, yeah, basically yeah, what you said. I'm like, yeah, yeah. What is it? <laughs> put yeah. it in my own words. I'm going to yeah. make my own with it. What, what is your, what is your acting? Uh, just, well, just we did yell, all those yell at the angry part. <laughs> 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 just scream. Um, uh, yeah. Um, no, we, well in grad school we did all, we had all these books we had to read. Um, and I would, I, you know, I feel like, you, I felt like in grad school, you're so in your head about so much stuff that, again, it's like a thing where when I left, it was like, it took you a while to shake off some of that yeah, and then yeah, just yeah. be like, okay, there there were some exercises and some things there that sure, but I don't feel like ultimately I, I have a, a process of- I used to write a tactic for each like sentence. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like the, the I feel <laughs> that, I believe insane. that, I, you know, <laughs> mo- I dream yeah. someday, you know, like Any all that. Any kind of busy work that yeah, made yeah. me feel like I was doing something. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, so, okay, so- Actions. So, so we're doing uh, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. The 28th. <laughs> And you have to witness me getting my head chopped <laughs> off by <laughs> clothes on. And it's just close up on you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm in the back, like, making faces, like, whoa. <laughs> now, can I be Leatherface in this yeah, scenario? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to pull him out of the car yeah. with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. What what are you doing to prepare for that shoot day? For you getting your head chopped off? I'm saying, like, me, anyone, uh, Nicole, your dog. Whatever I don't know because about. I feel like um, part of that is it's so shocking that you don't want to. I don't know how, mm. like you know, like you don't want to be t- like already ahead of the thing before it happens. So you're showing up to set, like, hey guys, <laughs> <laughs> you want me to call action? I don't know. I have not been. <laughs> what? Have... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> These are not the things I'm cast as. <laughs> someday, yeah, 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 yeah. someday. Um, all right, so uh, uh, you're into Dungeons and Dragons. I, yeah, I was for a period of time. Oh, you, you've left? I don't know. It's just been so long since I've even played it. Where did you find that information? Because <laughs> you don't even know the guest name. <laughs> I do. Just I do. It's in the Google Calendar. <laughs> yes, it I, is yeah. Google Calendar. Yeah. <laughs> you, but you used to be, because I've never played Dungeons and Dragons. Russell's not into games. I want to do a Dungeons and Dragons day so badly. Would you do oh it with God. me? No, I really don't want to do it. I'm sorry. It's just acting. I don't want to do it. I will do anything else with a, for a day with you. I don't know why. I don't like, I don't want to. He doesn't like to. games. I don't like games. He doesn't like games. It's really weird. He just wants to get drunk and talk. I want to talk to you. That's, no, again, that's Dungeons and Dragons. I think, yeah, that's what it is. Getting drunk and talking. Okay, okay. Well, uh, you know, maybe. Maybe. Is it like rules that are off-putting to you? Yes, I don't like learning like a new... Um, no, actually, I just, I don't like competing. I don't like, uh, I don't like competing and I, I, I really don't like the process of having to learn a new game. Like something about it when we're like, okay, here are the rules to this thing. My brain is like, I do not give a shit. <laughs> and I, I, I can have fun in some, like I can do like, like a charades or something like, I like, like charades. Those are, I haven't, played, I haven't played in years. I would do anything. Those kind charades. of things, Pictionary, <laughs> that kind of stuff I can have fun with. But I think. Uh, something about sitting down around a board, like <laughs> I already see, is daunting to me. It's just like it, it, I feel life ending. I feel like I'm gonna die someday, and I'll be so mad that I played this board <laughs> game. I'll be so mad that I wasted time doing this. That's the I know that feeling when I'm you know? when I'm in a bad conversation. Oh my! I God. remember my my stepfather. Man, there was just a time when he was getting split up with my mom, and it was a long divorce, and he would be talking to me. And I was going through like an existential crisis and I just had this constant thought. I was like, what if the universe crunches? Like whatever the universe crunches. And, and this, this is, what is what happening. I'm doing. And you're stuck to oh, This God. is what I'm doing. And there was something like visceral. <laughs> and I remember I would, 
I would turn my feet. I was reading a book on body language. That's how deep I was into acting. I was like, <laughs> this book on body language. And it said like, oh, you can see if people's feet are facing the away. That means yeah, they want to yeah. leave. So I'd be like consciously my feet. And then you start moving your head. I'd be like, it would look like the fucking you're exorcist slowly, with my head behind slowly me. slowly turning away from him. Oh. And he couldn't, he couldn't see it at all. He no. couldn't tell. Um, okay, so fuck Dungeons Dragons. You're done. You've left that behind. No, I mean maybe I'll revisit. I'll, I'll play if you play. We could play a game together. Really? Sure. Oh, yeah. Fuck a celebrity, a celebrity Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. And Russell. Um, and yeah. who's your character in Dungeons? Do you have a thing that you like to? No, be? I, I make up a new one. I I don't remember what my character was. Yeah. You know, it, but that's that's the thing is, is like you enter every like it's it is like an acting exercise in a lot of ways I think because you create this person out of numbers and then you're them for like hours or yeah. de- or whatever and there also is no board it's it's all in your mind. So well, you that's know. the thing with Dungeons Dragons. I think I didn't fully understand was like it really you you're, you're really making up. As you go, everything. There's like n- there is no rule. There are rules you can follow, but I I like um I so I probably why you bring up Dungeons and Dragons is I used to have a podcast about it my own when I was fifteen, sixteen, whatever. Um, and I had an episode where I didn't know how to be like the dungeon master or whatever. But a twenty four put together this thing where like I was the dungeon master and. I did an episode where it was um, Bo and Gillian Jacobs and Gerard Carmichael. It was so much fun. Uh None of them wanted to learn rules. No one knew anything. So I just like wrote on a piece of paper, just like vaguely follow these guidelines. And we just played for like an hour and you just like throw dice to tell you, you know, like you or you could play it with like a magic eight ball or something. Yeah. (laughs) I think maybe. Okay. That sounds better. I think maybe we just because of the, if Bo's there, you're down for the game. I meant like, I meant like, I thought there was a board. I thought there was, I thought there was lots of cards. I I mean, there are, but you can just be like, no, I also think (laughs) that I think what's going specifically dungeons and dragons, what's going against it is the name for me. Dungeons and dragons. (laughs) I'm not a huge fantasy person. So I think mm. that there's that that was going against it too. Is that sure. it sounds so, you know, don't, like fantasy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. But I could, I could, I could get in anything. I hear you. Okay, good. Yeah. Um. So I, I am curious because as as a you know I was listening to various interviews with you and it's so interesting Ooh. because because you you did it so young. I mean it's it's to how do you feel when you're going through all that press stuff as a kid? I'm sure there were some people that talked to you like a kid and were like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. And then other people who like related to you as an adult. Yes. And like, what do you, I don't know, was there, it's, it's just people don't know how to relate to kids sometimes. Well, yeah. And I think, I think that's the world as well as press is it's like always understanding, okay, what kind of conversation is this going to be? Yeah. Figuring out how to navigate that. And then. Sometimes it's just like being recorded for whatever uh, various news sites. Did you ever say anything in an interview that, looking back, you're like, "Oh fuck"? Do you ever, do you ever really botch one? Because you're so young. <laughs> you're so. I'm sure if I was talking at eighth grade. Oh my god. Oh my god. The things oh. I might have said. I I don't, I don't think I have a botched interview. I think I pr- I probably like. You know, just watching them and seeing that sort of reflection of yourself in and of itself is disturbing. Uh, yeah. So it's like hard to, I don't know. Like I, I don't necessarily agree with everything I used to say. Not because it's wrong, but I just feel like I've grown as a person, which hopefully I have in the past, like almost five years. Yeah. Yeah. But I was listening to one where in the middle of the interview, your dad texted you, "Stop saying I'm um, so much." Oh, the, yeah. And that- I thought that was so. I just <laughs> I thought that was such an interesting. Because I would be that dad if I if I had a really? kid in the interview, <laughs> I I could see like being like, oh sweetheart, she's saying I'm too much. Okay, let me text her really quick in the <laughs> middle of the interview. And uh, well, uh, I I'm the wrong one though. Why was I checking my phone? <laughs> sure, but I think like it was like it was like a loving thing, but also like a it's it's whatever your dad's role is in all of this. I right, mean, it's, right. it's a complicated dynamic because your parent wants to help you. Yeah. Yeah. But at some point you got to let go and like, yeah, ha- have you, have you, did you ever struggle with that? Like now you're, you're of age, your parents aren't driving to you all the shit anymore. Mm-hmm. Was there a, was there a phase of them like kind of falling out of your decision making and all these well, things? Sort of. Um, yeah, I don't Cause also something sort of strange that happened is I was always anticipating that transition, but then um, like the pandemic hit and by the time I was really doing anything in the world, because even working in Bulgaria, I was 17, about to be 18. So, like, I had a parent with me when I was there. Um, 
but I wasn't doing a bunch of stuff in person and and every um, audition was self tape. Yeah. So yeah. by the time I turned 18, it wasn't this slow fade out. It was just like, oh, it feels weird to like bring you to events now, unless yeah. it's something you really want to go to or, so it was pretty stark, but I think, I don't know if it, it feels normal now. When you were on I set, think. did you, was you said you went to Bulgaria with your mom? This is for Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, yeah. Was your mom on set for these scenes? Were you like, "Mom, please"? <laughs> I couldn't imagine <laughs> acting anything intense with my mom. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. At all. Yeah, that's that's always been a big struggle for me, actually, because um, it was it was usually my dad on set, and when I was doing like that show, Castle Rock, he he would like watch at the monitor. Which I get that he's very excited for me and stuff, but looking back, I'm like, oh, I was, I probably was like, f like feeling crazy anxiety. I didn't realize because how can you be vulnerable around your parents in any capacity? Yeah. And then, then to have that recorded, yeah, like, whoa, because I, I act now and I'm on my own on set a lot of the time, and it, it feels so much more freeing. And I was like, why is this? And then, yeah, and then I'm like, like oh, oh, I don't yeah. have to like live up to my parents' expectations. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing with with like with stand up is people mm. for the big events, people want to come to it. Yeah, uh, and sometimes it's like yeah. I don't want you. There. Yeah, and it's really hard. It really is like when you do to like, like set that boundary. Those shows that you're like are so exciting when you're like, oh, I actually don't know anyone that's going to be in this in this crowd. Yeah, and then sometimes really like, when it goes really well, sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish they saw this thing. But yeah. like, I think especially with stand up. I, it's always embarrassing, I think, when I have to do two shows uh, in the same uh, same night that mm. the service, the staff, the wait staff, they're seeing me tell some of these jokes again. And there is a feeling of like, oh, God, you got to yeah. you get to see me faking. You get to see me see, pretend I think and misdirect. So I think it's very cool because I think um, I think of when I went to your taping for uh, what was the taping you did? Uh, Infinite Briss? No, oh, no, no. no. Shelf Life. Shelf Life. Yeah. Um, uh, you were like, Infinite Briss was not the one I was oh, impressed no, by no, at no, all. No, 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 no. That was good. But, um, no, it was uh, a newbie. The, um, self, that, that one, Shelf Life. Um, what was impressive is because you were doing a taping and we, we watched the whole show and then that we were like, oh, we have to go back and do a few moments. And what was really cool is to be like, it was a good reminder. You're like, oh, you were a really good actor. In the way that, like, mm. you made it all seem like... I did, I did a stand-up bit where I saw my friend getting decapitated, yeah. and I <laughs> yeah. nailed it. No, but it was like, it required yeah. you to jump back into the middle of a bit and do this thing and make it really believable, and, and you know... Uh, sure, but sometimes I not think ideal that, for... Sometimes I think it's embarrassing, because when I do that, it reveals that, oh, I don't... I was faking it before. Yeah, but like I, was I mean, like, mm. I feel like that's a thing when people see it and they're like, oh, they're like a really good. Sure, it's sure. It's like, I, I don't know. There's something where I'm like, that's a good performer who like knows, has crafted this kind of performance of this thing rather than like, I'm going to do a whole different show. That would yeah. be insane. Mm. You know, every night, you know. Do your parents like, do their compliments <laughs> move you anymore? I think Whose compliments move you? Wow, because you, because you, because again, yeah. you're you're young, you're an actor, you've been doing it forever. Everyone's showering you with with praise, and as I think at some point you get numb to a lot of different praise. Who is it that when they text you or they see it, it makes you go, oh? Um, I don't know. I mean, I almost feel the opposite of get it like numb because I think I feel everything so much more. Um, like all the good feels just like so good. Um. And all the bad feels so. Not that I'm like getting a lot of bad, yeah. but you know, you know, like you see shit on Twitter or whatever. Sure. Um, but who's yeah. coming after you on Twitter? Yeah, who's coming? Oh, I don't after? know. Probably like film Twitter, or whatever is. Oh, I, I, I had a lot of people for a while being like, "Whatever happened to Elsie Fisher?" Um, which was so interesting to me because I've been working regularly, whether you're seeing it or not. And then also, like, there was a pandemic. Like, people were out of work for a while, and we're sort yeah. of yeah. just now coming out of that. <laughs> that is yeah. brutal. Um, and also, it's it's only been a couple of years, guys. Come on, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 2018 to now, and there was a pandemic. Like, like uh, I, do you think that's just because of of the how big eighth grade was, and that then also you grew up a bit, and you you mm. know your hair short, like you you look different than you did in, in oh, the yeah. movie eighth grade. So I feel like people might just be be kind of dumb and not, <laughs> like, well, because you, you didn't know. remember from Barry. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, he, I was he, like, he, oh, he yeah, remember, Barry. realized from Barry, he didn't make yeah, the connection. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, it's like, yeah, I don't. I think it's it definitely part of it is me changing, which is good because I feel like it's so hard to reinvent yourself once you become like a personality or whatever. Or not mm. that I'm a person, but like an actor, a performer in any capacity to like, yeah. Especially coming from being a child actor, um, so I'm I'm kind of in a weird way like roundabout grateful that people are like, what happened? Because at least I'm not stagnant. Yeah. But. Um, but Did yeah. you go a hair short for a role, or was it on your own? No, I just always hated having long hair. And really? Yeah, like and. It, <laughs> bless my parents but they you know they never really got me like haircuts and stuff so like why it was as long as it was in eighth grade was just because like i was 13 and i didn't know how to go ask for a haircut yeah yeah yeah. and then like january 2020 i cut it just because i wanted to and it, it had sort of been like chopped and whatever and and I, yeah i don't know it just felt right i've always wanted because i i always get scared about big hair changes and i always mm. back i used to have the fantasy of like oh i'll have the rolls that'll make me do that. It was like, that. Mm-hmm. that's how, I, <laughs> once the casting director came out to me, and I mean, I, I, I like now, it was not working, and she was like, would you play a skinhead in a movie? Oh, and immediately you're like, yo, of course, I'll play anything in a movie. But I thought like, okay, Wait, where did I'm going to see you this? Uh, a one-on-one. Oh, okay. uh, it was no, like before a workshop. It sounded thing. like she was on the street. <laughs> like, you play a skinhead. I was like, I don't know if that was a casting director. Um, uh, but I thought like, I was like, Okay, cool. I'm gonna see what I look like bald. Yeah, because I would never do that on my own. Oh, sure, I, yeah. I, I would do like it for that. play. It looked horrible. <laughs> it was a. I had to be bald for a play. Well, you were talking like, about when you did any war books? N- no, 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 no. <laughs> that was a bald cap in seventh grade. Yeah, um, I seen that uh, picture. Uh, no, no, no. That looks great. No, it was for the. It was for Julius Caesar. I was doing, and I had to mm. shave it. And where's uh, these pictures? I, I, oh, I, oh, I, I, I got to get rid of picture. them. <laughs> it really like because in my head before I was like, yeah, sure, I'll shave it, no big deal. And then I did it, and I looked in the mirror, I was like, oh, it's awful, it's <laughs> so bad. Was it's, it like buzzy or was it like bald? Like you were bald. Oh, it was. It was like very short, uh, bu- buzzed, but like, mm. but so short that you could see my skull. And I had like a weird line in my skull where I was like, it looked like a scar almost. Oh, Whoa. it was or horrible. Please find a picture <laughs> of that. I don't know if I have one. Um, I want to do. We I should just go. Sh- shave it right now. Yeah. Just yeah. Take right hey, 100 now. Patreon members, <laughs> Russell will shave. <laughs> yes. No, I'm growing along for the other show. I'm going to keep it long. Yeah. 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 Right, right. I, I would like bald. I would like I would like blonde. Mm. I would like I would love like deep blue. Deep oh, blue. Deep that'd be blue. cool. You should do that. I, like Would a you real have to blue. go blonde first to then go I deep think blue? So. Well, yeah. I went mm. through a brief goth phase. In, I think in I saw a photo of this. On yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't have many, but I wanted to do blonde highlights. But because my hair is so dark, they, it came out orange. Just a, a horrifying orange. It's just gross. I hate orange. I think yeah. orange just doesn't work. Well, that's very mine. like spooky though, you know? Like no, Halloween. It was spooky. That was just not the goal I was going for. I was looking yeah. for cool. Right, right, yeah. right. Sexy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, before we go into, uh, this has got to stop. You've, you're now in New York. How long have you been in New York? Uh, I've been in New York since like February. Yeah. Okay. So other than the good things about New York that you like, be honest, what are the, what are the downsides of being here <laughs> on the East coast in this fucking city? In this fucking place. Um, what neighbor, what, what area are you living in? I'm in like hell's kitchen. Okay. Mm. Very which, nice. Um, yeah, I love it. It's hard to talk about what I hate cause I think I'm still so awestruck. Wait, how, how soon have you been, how long have you been here for? Since February. So oh, okay. a couple months. Yeah. Are you all taking right. the subways ever? Are you? Uh, yeah, all the time. Really? After yeah. the Cougar? What is it called? Not Cougar. Cudin? What's the fund that opened up? The oh. Cudin? What? What's the money that opened up? The what fund? No one knows this. No oh, Coogan. Like, no Coogan. Kidnapped. Coogan. Coogan. Like, the Cougar fund. I thought, you, yeah, I thought you were talking about like a serial the killer. Cougar, oh. After the After coo- the Cougar? After the cootie attacks. <laughs> what's, yeah. what's my Coogan fund? Because I'm Ubering everywhere. Oh, yeah. No, I've I, been Ubering way too much. I feel so guilty about spending money. Yeah. I like... Like, I'm like, I, this is a bit right. I need to work harder to be able to Uber. So you've been on the subway and you have no downsides about this city? No, no, I I mean, I think, like, I don't know. Maybe, 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 uh, I, I mean, I do have downsides, but I'm so hesitant because I, I don't feel like a real New Yorker yet. Yes, so I'm I like, understand. I'm such a piece of shit if I complain about this place. Sure. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't know. I don't know anything. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe, like but maybe that's the downside is, like, there's such a, there's such a stigma against people who move here. I'm not being real. Either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's like, I fuck think you, it's man. a weird time. There's a weird thing where it's like uh, to complain about New York. You feel like you're playing into some weird political 
thing. You know what sure. I mean? Sure. Like, mm. It's scary the crap. You know, like it feels like yeah. a like yeah, a, yeah. A, a weird political thing. You know, but it is scary sometimes. That's my yeah. problem. It is, but it. it's always relatively yeah. been fucking scary. It's the it's New York City. It's the fucking center <laughs> well, yeah, of the you, universe. You know what you're walking like, into like, when you move on. here. <laughs> like. <laughs> Okay, one one thing I do hate though, I I re- <laughs> I got a thing. Yeah. Uh, I recently became a dog parent, which is very very exciting. Uh-huh. I have the fucking cutest dog you've ever seen. He's half Chihuahua, half Husky. Uh-huh. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but he's like an asshole when there's other dogs, and that's our thing to deal with. I'm gonna go get him training. Like he's gonna be a good boy. But other people with dog, like like my dog will start freaking out, and other people with dogs won't do anything. No, they're to like, they're they're. It's insane. I have a dog too. Yeah, and I'm my my last one who is dead um, was uh, uh, was uh, would get like you know dog. Yeah, they, they have their thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there are people that because I have a park right next mm-hmm. to where I live. People with off leash, they just let him go, and they the, the dog would run up to, and you're like, my dog's aggressive, like. Yeah, they're like, like, and like and they're like, oh, my, dog, dog's my dog's fine. You're mine like, isn't. Well, mine isn't. <laughs> so get your fucking dog away from mine. Because like, then you're liable if your yeah, dog like yeah. attacks the other one. Yeah. That like we were in Central the other day, and this old this old woman had her dog off leash, and it didn't it didn't have a recall command. So he came running up to no, me. They can't control me, them. They and I, I had to like them. pick up my dog. He was like biting my head. Yeah. And shit. I'm like, lady, come on, get your dog. Yeah. That is annoying. You already got the New York accent down. There you go. I know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Get well, your dog. Get your yeah. fucking dog, lady. Yeah. Come on. Are they supposed to be on leash at all times? Yes. Is that the rule? Or if if they're or if not, they, if they're not, you they better be able to listen to your command. And like, be like like that. Like yeah. Because but you, they don't. People are just like, nah, my dog's fine. Like yeah. But then they're like, like they just keep running. They want to like they'll run up to your dog. You know. Yeah. And, and it, then you get in trouble if your dog bit their dog. Exactly. You know? And it, it's like you could be in the middle of training your dog. Yeah. You need their full attention. All this stuff, and then all that's out the window. Yeah. So, like a some little, ah, it's like running at them. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. I'll that never is, forget. I I've, I've no, talked about I, it before. I just I was this, I was I don't I, even. I it's hate such, this story. It, it's it's the image. Well, I'll never forget oh. it. Where it was a dog. Uh, killed another dog on 23rd Street, and it was God. like this woman was was holding this small dog who was clearly dead, clearly dead. And she dead. was like the nanny or the and, dog and walker. The, oh, the, the, no. the dog that killed. It I mean, was, it was just it was very clear. Yeah. Uh, that this this was not the dog's owner, and she just looked like not sure what to do and on the leash with this big fucking dog. And then I just remember the the. The the other dog of the the other owner of the dead dog coming running out of the store like you know sparkles what happened sparkles are you okay and then it was like everyone's watching this yeah. dog's dead can and I tell just, you just oh uh, can I tell you there's uh, this is um, this is not as bad um, the um, twice- can you imagine listening to the downside they're like. Fuck, your Mark is going to tell the goddamn. <laughs> I know, I know. How many times did you do this? Like Mark Marin tells how he didn't get SNL a hundred times. I tell the time you I saw a dog get killed by another dead dog. dog on Twenty Third Street story again. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, one I know someone who twice now, twice now, they've gotten a call being like, "Hey, we have your dog," and they were like, well, "What do you mean you have my dog?" Their dog walker walks so many dogs that they have lost their dog and not even known that they lost their dog and they've gotten a call because their dog's been turned in somewhere being like and two different dog walking services but can you imagine walking so many dogs that you lose one and you don't remember like you just like it's like a big thing of balloons one like, goes off and you're like, like okay like it's been yeah. yeah that is terrible although now I wonder like is it because everyone has a small white curly haired dog exactly. named Bella or something yes yeah because it could be that, and which it's, and it's hyper allergic. You know, it's like yeah. one of those ones they make in a lab. Um, he loves little peanuts. <laughs> they always have some court. John Marco loves talking about dogs. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want a cat now, but Tova's deathly allergic. Oh yeah. Uh, Are there hyperallergenic cats? Sphinx, I don't think so. Sphinx cat. Yeah, Hair- get that hairless. one's hairless. Yeah. Oh god. You they're know those things. Ugly. <laughs> There, yeah. there, there was. Um, I don't remember how I learned this, but like some pl- some vet's office had a sphinx cat that went around, and they were like, "It's butthole suction cups every time it sits down because there's no." So you're like, a <laughs> yeah. "Oh my god, that does sound fun." <laughs> um, all right, let's go on to our our next segment. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. Dun dun dun. Uh, do you have a this got to stop? Um, I think people have got to stop. Having opinions about everything. Mm-hmm. You know, what's, what's an opinion recently that really made you just go, shut the fuck up? <sighs> I'm sure I can think of, I'm sure I can think of 
Yeah, you give us a few because I I feel yeah. like I see stuff all the time and I'm yeah, just give like me, give you us. you don't know anything. Why do you why do you have an opinion on that? You don't know anything. Okay, I'll talk about this thing. I'll talk about this thing. Are you mad about me? What no, did no, I do? no, 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 no. I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about. Uh, uh, I'll try to keep it vague, but mm. I think I'm going to talk about it. Okay. Whoa. Well, I'm so uh, nervous. Uh, dun, dun, dun. There's so we're obviously we're very uh, our podcast uh, trans friendly podcast. Uh-huh. Absolutely, hundred percent. And um, there, oh, yes. there is uh, someone uh, recently. Sometimes you have friends, and they start expressing transphobic views online suddenly. And yeah. sometimes, sometimes in a way where like. It seems to have caught their imagination and like it is their number one cause. And now. they're radicalized now. You're like, it's what like they're happened? radicalized and you're like, what happened? But this person, and we're going to keep it as vague as we can, but it's yep. not going to be that vague, is a, a, a psychic, a medium, talks to spirits. Mm. And I think I find it hard to imagine that you believe in ghosts, but not gender <laughs> fluidity. I think there's something about that that feels very much at odds to me because I saw Casper the Friendly Ghost and I don't remember a cock in there at all. <laughs> I remember a very vague tale that could have been fucking anything. Yes. And I I think it is, it's very strange. I mean, the same thing with, with J.K. Rowling where, where it becomes... All consuming. All consuming. Yeah. Even like, look, I have enough problems with, with if, if you're, if, if, uh, those views, period. But when they become like the number one in the world, c- uh, consumed You're with, like, with so you many know things. About me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am trans. But like, like it's it's it is bizarre, and it felt like happened like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and it's just like it's happened, and I've seen it with like bigger celebrities. But this first time where it's something a little bit closer, where I'm like, why now? Why so intensely? The, and just there's so many other things that you could be fucking dealing with yeah. than, than this conversation. And again, I always think of James Acaster. I've talked about this before. Comedian James Acaster. Yeah, who, yeah, yeah. Where he talks about, he was he was talking about how Ricky Gervais always makes transphobic jokes. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, yeah, you know who needs to be taken down a peg? Trans people. It's like, <laughs> this, is, this, this is not the, this is not the like heroic cause. This is not people making the decisions it's very, and this one was shocking because I think it's like it's it's with people who are liberal. Yes, which is is and where yeah, I'm like, well, I'm going to tell you like, who your allies are going to be on this, and they don't agree with you on anything no, else. No, and you gotta you gotta ask yourself why. Yeah, it's very upsetting. Yeah, so it's just, but I just think that's the funniest thing of it is this idea of right. if if you're going to believe in in ghosts and spirits and all these uh uh you're asking the world you're asking things. the world to hold a lot of space for for who you are in this world yes and what you do and in non-physical realities and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and and so yes exactly and and then to then be like to then say that this thing doesn't exist and blah, blah, blah is is it seeming it's a really hard stretch and then when you use this this was the other thing when you use the fact that you can con- converse with spirits and whatnot to reaffirm your beliefs because now oh and this God. is my problem with it from the beginning this is yeah. my problem with the religion period where now you're like well spirits have you know shared with me that they they're also transphobic <laughs> everyone who's ever died in fact <laughs> is transphobic well I can speak to them and now you're stuck because yeah. you you've you've granted them a are degree. Are the trans of, people who died transphobic? I mean, we could. Oh, who know. knows? I I I I don't know what spirits they're talking to. But yeah. I'm just saying, like, when you talk to spirits, one of my biggest problems is then that gives you carte blanche to to claim whatever you like. Right. The, sp- yeah. all, the spirits all agree with you. How fucking convenient. Right. I would love a medium who like argues with the spirits. Like like they they don't. Hear what they want to hear. Yeah, spiritual. Yeah. Like you're no, you're wrong. Like you're straight up wrong. Do you watch White Lotus? Yes. Did you see the most recent episode? Ah, uh, like, last is that, night. Like, last night. Last, I haven't seen yeah, last yeah. night. Oh, uh, you can spoil it. Was, it's okay. Okay, it's it's not too big a spoiler, but uh, uh, what's her name? Jennifer Coolidge. Jennifer Coolidge has like a medium and basically asks oh like, you know, God. does my husband still love me yeah. or whatever? And the medium's like, there's another woman. And Jennifer Coolidge is like, you're so negative. You're, yeah. I hate <laughs> you're you. So you're negative. negative. You I don't leave. want this. Like, and it's you're so toxic. F- but it was just so, it's, her character's so funny because oh. she's so brutally 
unaware to this degree where yeah, yes, it, she is aware it's though too she's aware but unaware but it's like yeah. she's like she wants a positive psychic she just she realizes she, she just, just wants, wants a psychic to, to tell her what she wants, wants it, yeah. but yeah. still can believe in it in some capacity right yeah. right and yeah. that's what this this reminds me of so it's yeah. it's uh that's just one in particular that's been really bugging me and you know i don't know it's it's just it's like we we did a live episode with the drag queen the other day, and uh, uh, they were telling us about wherever they they grew up. They they just outlawed drag shows. Yeah, it's like some fucking eighteen hundreds shit that's happening right now. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's really. I just, especially with the drag stuff, where they they claim like, oh, they're grooming kids, and you like, just go like, y- there's some. Thing where these are the religious people and the people who I'm sure have funded the Boy Scouts. And there's just something where you're like, what is your what is your brain doing that you're not that you're ignoring the things that have actually happened and projecting it onto this? Yeah. What is it? I don't yeah, obsession with like pedophilia. It's like a a very weird obsession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's because like that. The, like they all, f- it's the child in them that's scared of something that's different. So then they need to like project it on the children of today somehow. Like yeah. some some like Freudian shit. It's like also that. weird to talk about freedom so much and then be like, of but course, here's eighty thousand things right. that you can't do. <laughs> that you're like, but why? Uh, yeah, it's. I mean, I, I sometimes I'm I, not saying anything. It's more just new. trying to understand. It's like what is I, I sometimes think with kids. Like I always had the thought of like if you're if you're a dad and you're straight mm-hmm. and you have a son and they're gay. There might be a feeling of like, oh, I can't relate to my son on this thing. And like, so maybe there's a fear of I will not be able to connect with my children if they do something different. So I'm going to just, there's this idea of like, I'm going to protect my kid from even seeing this. Right. Yeah. And it must be some fear in there of just, you won't be able to connect to your kid. I imagine something's fueling this that I don't understand because I'm just like, fuck it. Be a drag queen. Yeah. People ask yeah. me with my kid, do I have a boy or girl? I had a drag queen. <laughs> I think, yeah, I, it's all fear. Oh my God, he you walked know, in heels for his first time. Like how people, yeah, it's just everyone's scared. Yeah, well, everyone just needs like a thing to be mad about. You're right. That's, that's the other. That's, and all, okay, also, uh, yeah. No, I mean, like the way people talk about trans people is how we look at how people talked about gay people. And like you, you, you know, and that was fucked up. And yeah. we're only b- barely now, I guess, getting over that. So people need a new like group we, to be yeah, socially we, acceptably mad at. I think we've talked about this before, but I feel like there, like another thing is like, there's some for some people like you know we do things that we love every day that we're really passionate about and i feel like sometimes if you don't have that in your life the easiest thing to feel something uh, like with is rage and like like Mm -hmm. at least i feel something and i feel like that's a lot of um, people in america sadly it's like the, the a way to feel it, and it's, and like, it's, a, way it's to like make, a way to get passionate about something and it's not a good passion it's not like ooh i'm having fun i'm laughing a lot with my friends but it's like a something that makes them feel and they can get really passionate and about. it creates a community it's kind of yes. like we, we we i mean i think we always talk about especially with the internet and social media we're like there's a real lack of human connection mm. and yeah. community building and like the one thing that does build community is uh, a mutual hatred Hate. for something yeah yeah and like it like gives you something to talk about it always gives you new fodder yeah i mean that's kind of the thesis of the show in a lot of ways i yeah. feel like is like you know like agreeing on feeling bad about or disliking something. Yeah. Exactly. It's a it's a very human thing. It just sucks when people sort of abuse it in the way they yeah. do. Yeah, too bad. I feel like being a guest on this should make you not transphobic, but guess that's oh, not wow. always oh, the case. Well. Uh, All right, we're going too close to out there. Um, <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> um, All right, let's go on to our final segment. Uh-oh. You better count. Your blessing. You better count your blessing. You better count your blessing. Russell, you got a blessing for us? Yes. Um, happy. What, when is this coming out? It's coming out uh, the 29th. Great. So you already missed it. But um, <laughs> but uh, happy to announce I am doing Titanic off Broadway full time eight shows a week. Come see us at the Dale Roth Theater um, now through end of February uh, as of now. 
Um, and uh, we just did Seth Meyers. Uh, so Whoa. check that performance out at, uh, well, I haven't done it yet. So full disclosure, I haven't, it's happening soon. But it will be on airing on November 22nd. And so uh, check that out online. You'll see me. Um, Hopefully, unless they cut me or I die before we <laughs> tape <laughs> next week. <laughs> That's going to be the sad thought. Like, if you die suddenly. Oh, God. That, that part of me will be like, like oh, we got to edit this out because it's like very depressing. <laughs> like, oh, they, they had to fail and find someone else for Seth Meyers because uh, he couldn't do it. Uh, no, I'll, I would like re-release the Patreon episode where we discussed what we want for our funerals. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you want me to go up there and say, just so everyone knows, Russell did not want to die. Did not want to die. He wanted that to Russell wanted to be clear that possible. this is not what he wanted he at loved all. Life. He loved it. He loved it. It was his favorite thing. Um, I guess my blessing is that, you know, it's wonderful to see everyone I know get on late night before I do. <laughs> It's uh, it's such a blessing to always have something to aspire to, and, <laughs> and I know that if I ever I'll achieve my it dreams, <laughs> it's, then it's, there'd be nothing left to nothing. look forward to. It's nothing, kid. So, out of the three of us here, how many of us have will have been or have been on late night? Um, is it just oh my two out of three? God. I mean, yeah, because I am two out of three people. You will. It's a good ratio. You'll do it someday. I'll put in a word with Fallon for you, please. I've been on a couple times, so yeah. I we're, we're pretty close. We're pretty close. Now. Oh man. <laughs> I do have a blessing for us, Elsie. Um, I um, am I, I'm blessed uh, that hopefully most people listening to this, as well as myself and us, um, have all ten toes. Y- you know, specifically ten toes. Yeah, yeah. Y- you ever you ever met someone who's missing a toe? I well, I have a friend who's missing all ten. Wait, um, your balance, wait. your balance out the door. Like, oh, you're talking about your friend who had his legs lost. removed. Yeah. Jesus oh. Christ. No, no, no. But like, I think like like I mean. Very sorry for yes, that, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Not so much a blessing. Yeah. But um, I had a conversation <laughs> with a man recently, and he's missing his big toe on his left foot, and he, like, can't... Oh, like, balance stuff. He can't, like, run. He can't run places because it, it, do, it just doesn't work anymore. I wonder what... He has to get a prosthetic, like, toe... toe? To be able to like walk yeah. normal. Well, they think of everything. Wow. So, be like, be <laughs> thankful that you have all your, your digits and whatnot, because... Uh, could change your life. Would you rather be missing one your toe. one toe or one finger? One thumb. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I think toe. I think toe. Mm, I think getting around is is Well, he can get around, maybe can't run. Yeah. He's not like I, I it sounds like he's walking. He's not like I don't know. He's I not mean, taking two steps and like falling Have everywhere. you ever run through the rain and spun circles and felt the, the freedom of being alive? That's so true. <laughs> but he I, he still can get a prosthetic toe. Sure. But sure. is it going to be the same? I'm sorry. I'm not I'm not dissing this, this any one, amputees yeah. I, wait, who may be the, listening or like. Are you are you connected to the you know the the little shoe story? That's your story, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't want to talk okay. about here. That's a good story. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, be thankful for your <laughs> feet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wow. I just remember that story, and I was like, "That's the best okay. story of all time." That's no, we're not uh, telling that story. <laughs> great. Um, Am I gonna have to boot that? What I just said? No, you're fine. Okay, good. No. <laughs> uh, I think one of our listeners will know what that is, and that's fine. That Jackie I hope laughing. will know that. Jackie that, will laugh what really that is. Hard. Yeah. Wow. Um, all right. Wow. So this is coming out the 29th. What do you want? To, you already plugged it. Go see your show, plugged Titanic. It. Titanic, eight shows a week. And also, I guess in the future, also, we'll have a Christmas Uncle Function show coming up December hey. 17th. December 17th. Yeah, you yes. say it with your chest. September, no. Uh, <laughs> Saturday, December 17th at Asylum NYC. Come see Uncle Function's Christmas show uh, before they tear Asylum NYC down to the ground. Uh, uh, say anything you want to plug? Yeah. Um, watch season two of The Summer I Turned Pretty whenever that comes out next year. Ooh. What is it on? It's on Amazon. It's on uh, Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Great. We're, working for the Zon all day, baby. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I hear we t- us hey, too. Us no, too. I know, yeah. I know. I'm, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did my research. Uh, it's yeah. a good, good, good. Uh, uh, for me, um, let's see. Join the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside. The only place you can hear our live episode with Dusty Ray Bottom, Bottoms. Uh, and for me, I'm recording a clean album December 12th, uh, December 4th. December 4th, Sunday, December 4th, 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. I'm recording a clean album for Sirius XM. Uh, please, please come out. Uh, uh, I need this recording to go well. 
it's going to be clean so I can make the money off the, all the Christian stations. Yes. And then they come see me live and I go, I'm a Jew. Ha ha. <laughs> and I get them. <laughs> um, and, uh, I, you know, whether, whether your body is torn asunder by uh, Leatherface with a chainsaw mm-hmm. or by the bugs in the ground, one day everything you know will be uh, uh, broken up into a million pieces. <laughs> this is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi.